Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm gonna show you how I got this bottom end buttoned up and the steps that I take to ensure that everything is correctly done. I start by cleaning the main bearing seats with a little bit of brake parts cleaner on a lint-free cloth. Once clean, we can begin to install the main bearings onto the seats. The seats have a cutout for the bearing tab, which allows the bearing to sit in the correct orientation. Here you can see what the bearing tab looks like. Line up the bearing tab with the groove in the seat and push down. After installing each bearing, we can begin to apply assembly lube. Once properly lubed up, we go ahead and drop in the crankshaft. Now we'll install the main caps and bolts. At this point, you'll want to go in and clean up the mating cap surfaces. You'll notice the main bearing caps have a number imprinted on them, this being number one, so it goes on the front of the crank. The bearing caps also have the cutout for the bearing tab. Line up the tab into the bearing cap and press it down to seat it. Apply assembly loop to this side of the bearing as well. Install all of the main caps except for cap number four. Number four bearing cap holds the upper thrust washers in place and the washer's vertical grooves facing outwards. The ends of the thrust washers have a male and female side. Male goes with female as shown. Install the lower washers first. Then go ahead and install number four bearing cap. Once all the caps are in place, we can begin to install the main cap bolts. I drop the bolts into fresh motor oil to lubricate the threads and under the head, then transfer them to another container to drip off. Install the main bolts, but do not torque them down yet. Here we can tighten them down until they're barely snug. You want to hit the crank back and forth a few times with the rubber mallet to get the number four bearing cap seated square with the block. At this point, without it being torqued, you should be able to freely spin the crank with minimal to no effort. Uniformly tighten the main bearing cap bolts to 33 foot pounds in several passes in the sequence shown. Here, we'll wipe off the bolt heads and mark the front of the bolts with a marker. We will re-tighten the main bearing cap bolts 90 degrees in the numerical order shown.
check that the mark is now at a 90 degree angle to the front. Your crank should still rotate smoothly with little to no effort. Here we can go ahead and turn the engine over and we can begin orientating our piston rings as shown on the screen. Number one compression ring should be here along with the expander. So if we take a look at that, we got the number one compression ring opening here along with the opening of the expander there as well. Then we'll move to the number two compression side. And if we're looking from the top, should be here. And we can see the number two compression ring. We'll look at the upper side rail. This should be the upper side rail. So if we turn it around here, we can see the opening of the upper side rail there. You can see that little, little rail there. And we already saw the expander, which was this guy back there. And the lower side rail should be here. We can go ahead and get our piston ring compressor tool on here and get it down in the bore. Now before you put any pistons inside the bores, it's a good idea to go ahead and clean out the bores again. What I like to use is conventional non-synthetic oil and a lint-free rag. Put some on the rag and we'll clean out those bores just like we did previously. Spin the crank so the raw journal you're working on is at its lowest point. This will help eliminate accidentally scratching the journal with the rod end. Clean the rod bearing seats and caps before installing the bearings and apply assembly lube. I prepare the rod bolts just as I did the main bolts. Now we'll take our piston ring compressor, put it around the piston and piston rings, chop this bad boy in the bore. Slide the ring compressor over the piston and rings and tighten it with the Allen wrench. Orientate the piston so that this dot faces the front of the engine. Lower the piston and rod into the cylinder and align the compressor with the cylinder. Push the piston into the cylinder using the handle from a rubber mallet. Hold the rod end from both sides and position it to not scratch the journal. Tap the piston all the way down into the cylinder. Install the corresponding rod cap and rod bolts, but do not torque them. Check to make sure the crank spins freely and repeat the process for the remainder rods. Here we can go ahead and turn the engine back over so we can begin to torque the rod bolts. Alternately tighten the bolts of the connecting rod cap and several passes to 22 foot-pounds. Wipe off the bolt heads and mark the front of the bolts with a marker. We can retighten the rod cap bolts 90 degrees. At this point, the mark on the main end rock cap bolts should all be 90 degrees to the front of the engine.
And that's it. Thanks for watching. If you like these videos or you learned something, go ahead and leave me a comment. Subscribe. Let me know. This gets us ready to move on to the next stage of the build.